Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're going to talk about Bitcoin, and we're going to be providing an update to the bull market support bands. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. So, Bitcoin's currently coming in at around $68,000. This is obviously off the prior highs of 73,000.8K uh, or so. I mean, it depends on the exchange that you use. Uh, but it has had a bit of a pullback here, right? From the highs, Bitcoin is now down about 7.5%. The low, the, the furthest it's gone down so far, was about a 12% drop. Now, if you've been following this entire run... You're obviously no stranger to 12% drops. In fact, we've had a number of 20% drops, right? 20 to 22% drops. We've been following that for a while. And one of the things that I've said many times is that if you start to see corrections that exceed that 20 to 22% range or so, right? If you get something that comes in at 30%, then there might be reason to think that the trend is over and the trend is starting to reverse. Now, we haven't had that yet, right? I mean, we haven't had it yet. It's hard to know exactly when that will materialize. But so far, this has only been about a 12% drop. So what would a 20% drop even look like, right? I mean, if, if we were to drop 20% from the recent high, what would that look like? That would put you around 58K, right? 22% would put you around 57K. And what's funny is that, you know, the eight-week moving average, which is something that we we're actually below not that long ago, I mean, literally... A, you know, a little less than two months ago, we were below the eight-week SMA. The eight-week moving average now is at 57.9K, right? But it's crazy how, like, the market will certainly make you feel a certain way because if it only goes up, you know, for basically two months straight and then you get a correction at all, it, it, it can feel, you know, it can, it, it, I mean, it can, it can certainly bring out emotions in people. But, it, I mean, it just goes to show you how quickly Bitcoin has run up in, in a relatively short period of time. In fact, the extension from the 20-week moving average, if you were to look at the short-term bubble risk, even with this drop, is still above the prior extensions it reached back in March 2023 and in December of 2023. So, again, despite that pullback by Bitcoin... It is still more extended from the 20-week moving average than it was back in March 2023 and in December 2023 when it had fairly aggressive moves. So it, it just, you know, it helps to put things into, you know, perspective, I guess. Um, and the, the, the bull mark sport band, you know, right now ranges from around 47.7K up to around 49.4. So, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, at, at this point, if we were to go to the 20-week SMA, I mean, that's a pretty far drop. I mean, that would be about a 35% a drop. Remember, in 2019, once you had a larger drop to the bull market sport band after such a large extension, it was about, in fact, about a 35% drop to get back there. But it took a long time. We didn't just go straight there. We bounced around for a long time before that actually happened. Um, so, again, I mean, you know, and it's hard. I mean, it's impossible for me to know if this is the the local top for Bitcoin or not. I mean, it could be. Uh, it, it could also go a little higher as well. We still haven't seen dominance break to the upside. We still haven't seen blue chip dominance break to the upside. But there are a few concerning things out there, uh, like there always are. It's not like I mean, there's always something concerning out there. But, you know, they, they always do exist. And we've talked about a lot of them. For instance, gold continues as breakout. It has had a little bit of a pullback uh, from the most recent highs, but again, it's well above the prior range highs, uh, 2070. It's now at 2146. And so that has been something that we said, you know, half a year to 12 months ago, we said, look, when, when gold starts getting weekly closes below 2070, that's a sort of a signal. But we still haven't seen dominance of Bitcoin give that same signal just yet. But you can see that some of the other things that you'd be looking for for dominance to really make that breakout are slowly happening. Like ETH Bitcoin is starting to struggle again. And, and the lower that it goes, right, the, the, it should act as a tailwind for, for dominance to, to ultimately go higher. Now, some altcoins have been doing well, while most do continue to bleed back to Bitcoin. Um, so again, going back over to Bitcoin, USD, 
one of the other things that you know we, we talked a lot about over the last I don't know what two three months was USDT dominance and I'm not married to this trend line by any stretch of the imagination a lot of times in fact these sort of these diagonal trend lines will, will eventually be broken uh, so it's not like we can take this one to the bank but historically when when this trend line was was tagged in the past it was just before a fairly large correction in the crypto inverse okay could this time be different maybe but we did a video on this metric at around six and a half percent usdt dominance and i said back then that if it gets rejected here and we see bitcoin rally into the halving and usdt dominance usdt dominance dropped to about four percent or might maybe slightly less which it has, then it would put us back at this trend line. So that's exactly what's happened, right? I mean, we see, we've seen Bitcoin rally from the spot ETF launch as we've gotten closer to the halving and stablecoin dominance, right? USDT dominance has dropped back down to this trend line that has previously been respected. So again, I'm not saying that it has to mark, you know, the, the, the sort of that turnaround point, but you could see a case for it. When we were over here, when we first tagged the trend line, you know, in February 2021, Bitcoin did go marginally higher in March and April, right? Even though USDT dominance was putting in higher lows, we have to think about, well, you know, how could that happen? Well, one way it could theoretically happen is you said it, right? Alt's bleeding back to Bitcoin. You know, I mean, we've we're we're in that same area where alt Bitcoin pairs are. Um, you know, they've, they've seen this bounce off of the range lows. And I just wonder if they're just sort of going to roll over sometime as we get closer to the halving and then go back down, right? So it could be that rotation from alt into Bitcoin uh, that, that you know, lasts for a while. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I, I've seen some people say things like, well, you know, back over here when Bitcoin was making that move, you know, it it was going back to all the altcoins. But what's interesting is that, you know, during that move, they were right, right? I mean, it was, right? I mean, look at look at what Bitcoin dominance was doing during that time. I mean, Bitcoin dominance was falling off a rock. You're not seeing that here. Now, yes, there are some altcoins that are doing well, but some altcoins do not represent the collective altcoin market. Because if they did, then dominance would have gone down, but they haven't. And dominance continues to sort of slowly, very slowly grind higher here. In contrast to what was going on over here, where dominance was collapsing. So while it is true that back over here, Bitcoin was bleeding to altcoins, back over here in 2019, at these highs, altcoins were bleeding back to Bitcoin collectively. In 2017, Bitcoin was bleeding to alts, right? So again, you had you, you have very different outcomes, right? In, in this case over here, you had a, a rotation from Bitcoin to alts, but over here you had a rotation for, of alts to Bitcoin, right? Very different. This was Bitcoin to alts in early 2021. So you can see that it's not, I mean, again, and it's a fair comment, right? I mean, I read the comment, I was slightly annoyed, but then I was like, well, look, I mean, if, if you joined crypto in 2021, that's all you know, right? I mean, that's all you've seen happen when Bitcoin gets into these sort of these ranges up at relatively high levels, what happens? What has historically happened, right? In 2021, right? You saw Bitcoin bleed to the altcoin market and, and alt season commence after Bitcoin made these highs. The counterpoint, of course, is that that happened during loose monetary policy, during QE, low interest rates. You know, I mean, the Fed was reducing their balance sheet, right, QE. This was during high rates and, and the Fed was, 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 you know, removing assets from their balance sheet. And, and during that, that time, we saw alts bleed to Bitcoin. Right. So if you're if you're sitting there looking at, at, say, like a basket of 10 different alts and you're wondering why maybe only some of them are going up and not all. And, and while a lot of alts are still bleeding back to Bitcoin, I think the argument is, well, what if what if that's sort of that phase where that's just what's happening? 
I think one thing that often happens is like, you know, people see Bitcoin pump for a while and they just go chase alts instead because they think alts will catch up. And some alts do, right? Some alts have had pretty good rallies, right? They have. I'm not going to say they haven't. They have. But a lot of times the alts that are rallying are the ones that continue to rally and the alts that are not rallying continue to just do nothing. And then the people that are trying to catch up to what Bitcoin did, they end up buying these altcoins that haven't moved in a year and then those altcoins just keep on bleeding back to Bitcoin. So it's a dangerous game for sure. So again, you know, whether whether this turns into 2019 or 2021, I think it's going to be dependent on if retail comes back. And of course, we track that with the social risk on the website. Again, you guys can check out ITC Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. Sale is still going on, but that's the ultimate question, right? Like, will retail return in any significant way or will it just sort of fade away, you know, like, like 2019? So when thinking about where Bitcoin is right now, um, it, it has had a, a little bit of a pullback here. But again, I mean, considering the prior pullbacks, it still is a relatively tame one. You know, I mean, it's not even, it hasn't even been 15%. I mean, 15% would put you at 62K. Now, there are some important events coming up, obviously, uh, Fed related, right? FOMC related. If you go look at what's going to be happening on March 20th, we have another FOMC meeting. So I imagine there will be some volatility around that. But if Bitcoin does continue to fade here into the meeting or even after the meeting, that 20% threshold is a level to watch right? 20 to 22%. Because that is where Bitcoin has previously had fairly large bounces. And it also corresponds to the eight-week moving average, where it is now, right? Who knows where it'll be in a few weeks, but you know, it loosely corresponds to where the eight-week moving average is right now. Um, and if, on the other hand, Bitcoin just pushes higher, I mean, there's examples of that too. Uh, look at 2021, right? It had a long wick up right there. And then even after getting that long wick up with a small candle body close, what happened? The following week, it had a larger wick to the downside, but it still closed green, and then it just continued to slightly grind up. So I've said before, I mean, I do think there will be some rotation from alts into Bitcoin the closer we get to the halving. And I know like, I know, like right now, alt Bitcoin pairs are, you know, they have been going up here for a little bit, but I still liken it to what we saw potentially right here before it, it inevitably came back down. And it's hard to know. I mean, like, you know, I think you could have made a case at any point over here that that was where it was, right? And it was about to sort of fade and it, and it just keeps not doing it. But I think the reason it keeps getting back down to the range lows and, and it seems like it's going to fade and then it doesn't is because these expectations for rate cuts keep getting pushed further and further out, right? So I think the economy has remained stronger for a lot longer than a lot of people thought. These rate cuts get, keep getting pushed further out. And if you're wondering what that has to do with alt Bitcoin pairs, just remember when you look at, at interest rates and you, you overlay them with alt Bitcoin pairs, you can see that it wasn't until the Fed started to cut rates right here in July, or you know that's basically when alt Bitcoin pairs finally bottomed just about a month or two after the first rate cut. So that's why the bias, that's why my bias continues to be that alt Bitcoin pairs will eventually break down. It's just hard to know exactly when that is. And I think the market keeps sort of thinking, all right, well, it's now, no, it's now, no, it's now. And then what happens, we get some hot inflation data, labor market still prints below 4% unemployment, and, and then we just kick the can down the road, right? Bitcoin gets this another rally, then some of the alt, stronger alts sort of follow it. A lot of the weaker alts just keep on bleeding on their Bitcoin pairs. There's enough alts for people to, to sort of not believe the Bitcoin dominance theory, uh, despite the fact that, that dominance, you know, largely has been an uptrend. Uh, for the better part of a year and a half now when you include stable coins. So uh, a lot of interesting things going on in the market right now. The other thing that I thought was interesting was uh, the FIB retracement stuff. So look at this. You, you guys remember how in um, in 2021, Bitcoin, you know, it, it basically when it, when you look at the FIB retracement total, right, from the 2018 peak, 2017 peak, you can see that Bitcoin really retraced to the 3.618. Now, in this most recent rally, right, in this most recent rally, you can see that it actually retraced almost perfectly to the 4.236, right? What's fascinating about that to me is the fact that Bitcoin has retraced to the 4.236, but total has not. But what's more interesting is that total retraced to the 4.236 back in 2021, so what does that say? What does it really say? What To me, what it says is that 
you've basically had a massive rotation from altcoins to Bitcoin. Because look, look closely. In 2021, total retraced to the 4.236. Right now, it's at the 3.618, which is where the first top was in May of 2021. But look at Bitcoin USD again and where it is retraced to. It is now retraced to the 4.236. But over here, it more or less topped out at the 3.618. So it sort of seems like they've reversed, right? Total hit the 4.236 back in 2021, whereas Bitcoin did not. And now we've seen it reverse. Now Bitcoin's at the 4.236 and total market cap is not. So if there were a larger retrace here, then... In I imagine that that Bitcoin would, you know, I mean, I I had to have to imagine that it would it would not be great for the altcoin market. Now again, what do you look for, right? If it, you know, what would you look for for it to turn into something larger? Um, again, you know, anything below twenty two percent or so, right? If it because if it if it drops back down, you know, to the bull market support band, which by the way is below fifty k, right? If it drops back down there then you really have to start to wonder, all right, well, because it got so far extended, if it has to get, say, like a 30% drop, does that mean it's now finally playing out like, you know, like 2019 did just before rate cuts arrived? So I think that is the important thing to sort of look out for as you get closer and closer to the halving. And it actually could be the halving that keeps Bitcoin elevated relative to the altcoin market, right? I mean, in 2019, that's essentially what happened, right? It kept Bitcoin elevated relative to the altcoin market. Um, and if, you know, if this is correction is just sort of a, just sort of a one week thing and it doesn't fade, then, um, then you just, you know, you kick the can down the road and you say, all right, well, I mean, we'll, we'll revisit the eight week estimate eventually or the bull marks were fan and, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens, uh, to it whenever it tries to hold. But the problem with with it is that I've said this before, right? The longer you go without testing it, the harder it is to hold it as for. Now we're at 22 weeks, you know? I mean, we, we talked about it when it was like 15 weeks and 16 weeks. All right, well, if it were to test it now, it might hold it as support. But the further you get out, the harder and harder it's going to be. And, you know, given how high it is above it, unless you get a massive drop in a single week, right? I mean, it could take several weeks just to get back down there, especially considering the halvings in April, so on and so forth. I mean, you, I mean, you could be looking at 30 weeks or something. You know, what if it's not until May? So again, we'll, we'll continue to follow the 20-week estimate between one key and May. Um, hopefully, these videos are useful to you guys. Um, and again, if you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe, give the video a thumbs up, and again, check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at IntoTheCryptoverse.com. We have all sorts of webs, uh, all all sorts of charts on the website over here. Um, not only for Bitcoin, but also for a lot of altcoins as well. So make sure you guys check that out. Like and lower rate. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.